Here's the question, simple setup, complicated answer, kind of. Okay, so let's just think about what the question <coughs> is, and then we'll go about tackling it, okay? Find the greatest value of the modulus of z, right? How far z is away from the origin. If you know this about z, right? z is a particular set of complex numbers um, such that <laughs> this awful mess is equal to 2 at right, this distance. Okay? Now, how do you go about approaching such a question? Um, I will show you actually. There are, there are two ways to approach it. Uh, both of them work fine. I'm going to show you the way I went about it first because I do think it's, like, it's the first strategy I will take. It turns out that, that strategy doesn't end up being very useful, at least not very practical in this case. Okay? But I'm going to show you nonetheless because in other cases where you have a less complicated condition, it works fine and it is a superior way. Okay? How do we do this? Well, z is some complex number. I want to know its distance from the origin. I want to know the biggest distance I can get. And this is what I know. So clearly, this is my basis. Okay? And both of my methods are going to use that as a starting point. Because I don't know anything else about this. right? So this tells me there's a locus to find. z can move around. z is a point. right? And it can move around such that it satisfies this locus, right? Now, I usually think of a locus in terms of the x's and the y's, okay? So therefore, my first approach is to take this guy and to resolve what's going on, okay? Let's have a shot. Let's see what happens, right? Z is any complex number, right? So if I let z equal x plus i1, there's my real and my imaginary part, okay? Then I can just evaluate this, get all the z's out of the way, and get this as an equation in terms of x's and y's. That's not complicated conceptually, right? So I can say modulus of x plus i y, there's the first z, minus 4 on x plus i y, that's equal to 2, okay? Now, this is progress, but it's not nearly enough to actually sketch out what this thing is, okay? I have a modulus here, right? So that's a distance to a particular complex number, right? This whole awful mess is a single complex number, right? In the same way that, you know, I could say, that's a complex number, and um, this is a complex number, and if I put them all together, I'll get another complex number at the end. Okay? I just need to manipulate it a little bit. Okay? So these two parts here, you can see there's going to be a real part over here. There will also be a real part in here. There's an imaginary part here, and there will also be an imaginary part in there. I need to tease them apart and get them together. Right? So to do that, this I need to realize the denominator here, right? So I've got x plus i, y still hanging out there. What do I multiply this by in order to realize it? X minus it's uh, the conjugate of z, right? Which is x minus i, y. So I've got 4 times x minus i, y. And what happens is, on the bottom here, you get difference of squares, but because there's an i squared in there, it ends up being the sum of those two, right? Do you recognize that? So that is equal to 2. Now having done that, now I can see there are the real parts and there are the imaginary parts. Do you see them? Okay, so I want to gather them together because then I can take the modulus, right? So I go modulus, here's the first bit of the real bit, x over there, minus 4x on x squared plus y squared. That's the real part, okay? All the parts that don't have any i's in them. And then I say plus i times what? What's left? Y well, clearly there's the y there, right? Then I've got minus negative i y, right? So I've already taken that i out. Those two negatives are going to cancel with each other. So it looks to me like I get plus 4y oh, on yeah. x squared plus y squared equals 2, OK? Are you with me so far? What I do, I separate out real and imaginary parts. The whole point of doing that is now I know where this complex number is. There's the real part. There's the imaginary part. So the definition of the modulus whoops, is the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. That's so bad. Right? Now this, this is the point where I write it down. Right? x squared plus y squared squared right? plus y plus 4y on x squared plus y squared squared equals 2. Okay? Yeah. Now I look at that and I think, okay, <laughs> I think you're going to pack up and go home. Now, for what it's worth, this is not actually irredeemable, right? You can actually work with this thing. One of the big clues to know how to work with this thing, like that it's not like completely impossible is, what is the definition? Like algebraically, how do we um, compute the modulus of z? Uh, 
Yeah. What's, what's it equal to? Square root of x squared plus y squared. Exactly. It's the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, there's a whole lot of x squared plus y squared in there. Oh, can you stop Right? There are a whole bunch. And in fact, if I kept going with this after squaring things out, you get even more of them. Right? So the modulus of z appears in this equation all the time. Okay? However, even though it does, I look at that and I say, okay, maybe I will try another strategy. I'm not going to abandon this necessarily, but it looks like it's leading me down the garden path and I'm trying to choose a more efficient, I'm trying to cut my losses basically. Okay, at this point I know, well, this is gonna be hard, okay? And of course you don't know what this graph looks like. Like this is not a, a standard form that you recognize. In fact, I went ahead and I graphed it. It looks like that, okay? Now if you look really closely, in fact, if I, um, if I zoom in for you, you can see it's symmetrical. Um, this, it looks like a circle, but yeah, no, it's not, <laughs> okay? It's, um, it's much more complicated than a circle, okay? In fact, it's a kind of shape that we call a cardioid, but anyway, that's, you don't have to worry about that, okay? The point is, the point is, who, ooh, I didn't mean to stretch it that way. Sorry, let's change that back but to But that looks weird off. It does look weird off. Uh, I want it to be a square grid, <laughs> okay? My point is, I don't know how to work analytically with that. So therefore, I'm just going to put that to the side, and pause for a minute, okay? <laughs> now, just before I go, this, this is still useful to me, right? Remember, this is the locus traced out by that. That's where I started from, right? So that's the set of points that satisfies this. So actually what I want is, what is the furthest distance that any of those points is from the origin? That's what I'm trying to find, okay? Now my intuition, I don't really know this, but my intuition tells me that it's this point. Like this point looks like it's the furthest, okay? Which obviously this is the same distance, yeah? Uh, maybe it's somewhere up here, but I'm guessing it's there. Like if it's anything like a circle, then it should be, I should get a, a tangent here, which is perpendicular. I'm expecting that's the longest distance. I don't really know, but that's just what I'm guessing at, okay? So now, can I try something else, right? Come back to here. This was our starting point. You don't know anything else, so you must go back there. Okay, I didn't do anything wrong here. There was no like extra steps that I did. That was as simple as I could get it. That is the shape, okay? The question is, what else can I do with this thing to work with it other than try and work out what's going on with the locus, okay? And the answer is, come back to what the definition of the modulus is, okay? Do you remember, when you start talking about the absolute value of x, that's where you start talking about it, right? We just say, oh, it's just the positive version, right? And I told you that kind of works, but it's a very feeble definition, okay? Partly why is because it doesn't, it doesn't generalize to complex numbers anymore. Because you can't say a complex number is positive or negative, okay? A better definition I said was, it's the distance from the origin, which means it's the square root of x squared, right? The x squared will eliminate that positive negative information and then taking the square root takes you back to just the distance. Now the great thing about that definition, right, is that you can apply it right here just as easily, right? The absolute value of z minus 4 on z is the square root of the square of z minus 4 on z. That's the definition of an absolute value, right there, the modulus, okay? That's equal to 2. Like, that's, that's just what that says, okay? But I've just taken a different path versus this, okay? I'm all in z's, I haven't thought about x's and y's. I can deal with this. I'm going to square out both sides so I get rid of the square root. So this looks to me like, I might as well expand this while I'm at it. z squared take away 8 plus 16 on z squared equals 4. Are you happy with that? I squared both sides and while I was at it, I expanded that square in the middle, okay? I can tidy this up, this is not too complicated. I am going to subtract 4 from both sides, which gives me this. Okay, and then I want to solve this thing. How do I solve it? I think I multiplied by z squared, which is great because I actually know that z squared can't be zero. Okay, so I'm going to go z to the four, take away 12 z squared plus 16 equals zero. Just dealing with it as a regular old polynomial. No big deal. Okay, I can solve this thing. This is a quadratic in z squared, right? It's a quadratic in z squared, like that's z squared squared. So therefore, if I go to the quadratic formula, I can solve for z squared, okay? I'm going to get minus b plus or minus the square root of, help me out, b squared, take away 4ac. Are you okay with me? You're following so far? All on two, okay? 
This is 12 plus or minus the square root of 80, all on 2. That's 12 plus or minus 4 root 20? No, hold on. No, no sorry. 2. I took out a factor from it, yeah? 20? Okay. The reason why I'm taking out 2 is just because I want to cancel that 2 on the bottom. Are you okay with that? I could have taken out more, but I don't need to. Now, that gives me 6 plus or minus root 20. What is this? What is this? This is z squared, right? I don't want z squared. I want mod z. But thankfully, mod z is the square root of z squared, right? So therefore, mod z equals the square root of 6 plus or minus the square root of 20. Okay, now hold on. What have I just established? Okay, it's not that big a deal. It's okay. I've got two values here, right? What do I want? Which value did I want? I want the greatest value, right? So therefore, I don't really need to worry about the negative case because I know that's going to be smaller. So therefore, the greatest value for mod z is going to be the square root of 6 plus root 20. Okay, now, does that make sense? Does it work? Let me prove to you that it works. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to do is remember, I'm trying to work out distance from the origin. Okay, distance from the origin. So therefore, if I draw a circle that has center at the origin, right? All I need to know is the alleged radius of this circle, and that should trace out for me where the locus should go, right? Now this is the radius of the circle, and that's what I'm expecting. So therefore, when I, I've got r squared on the right hand side, do you agree? So all I have to write is six, six plus root 20. Six plus square root 20. But like, that's not the same thing as a true circle. No, it's not. It's the greatest distance I can oh, find. Right. Which you can see, like I, like I very fortunately guessed, corresponds to those points that I just got over there. Now, there's the answer. There's the answer that I wanted. Um, I'm always curious though, whenever you have an answer, I'll just finish this, and I ignore it. I'm always curious, like, what was that answer? What was it? And I'll show you what it was. If I draw a different circle, still center origin, but I say, well, what was that other guy? It was 6 minus the square root of 20. There it is. Right in there. It's, uh, it's these. These are the closest distance you can be. These are the smallest value of mod z. It's pretty beautiful.